Far beyond Earth's noise, a third interstellar visitor, 3I slash Atlas, is racing toward Mars, days from a flyby so close that every agency should be sounding alarms. Instead, mission feeds fall silent, official voices vanish, and the object's path slices almost flat through our planetary plane, something no ordinary comet should manage. With its trajectory locked, a corridor just five degrees off the solar system's disk and a hyperbolic speed, it's cutting through familiar territory as if on purpose. Why have the world's telescopes gone quiet as 3I slash Atlas heads toward Mars fast, and what happens if the truth is more extraordinary and unsettling than anyone's admitting? The silence only grows as the encounter approaches. Mars, silent and red, drifts just 18 million miles from the inbound path of 3I slash Atlas, close enough for its orbiters to catch every detail if anyone is watching. But the official feeds from Mars Express and Trace Gas Orbiter remain nearly blank. No press bulletins, no mission updates. The raw data streams, usually so eager to showcase Martian dust storms or seasonal frost, now show only routine science, no mention of the interstellar visitor threading through their skies. Inside mission planning rooms, schedules have shifted. Instrument teams quietly rework observation windows, squeezing in high-resolution passes and retuning spectrometers for water ice, organics, and isotopic fingerprints. Yet these changes pass without public notice. The only hints come from technical logs, buried timestamps, subtle tweaks to target lists, while the world's attention stays fixed on other news. The flyby window is measured in days, not weeks. At its closest, 3I slash Atlas will streak past Mars at a velocity of over 61 kilometers per second, its coma and tail faintly visible to any camera pointed in the right direction. For comparison, the last interstellar object, Borisov, never came within 150 million miles of a planet. Now, a cosmic visitor cuts nearly five degrees above the solar system's plane, threading a corridor that brings it within striking distance of Mars. A geometry so flat and precise that orbital analysts call it mission-like. Yet the silence holds. No agency steps forward to brief the public. The usual parade of mission scientists, so quick to claim discovery or warn of risk, has gone quiet. Even the amateur networks, those sleepless, camera-toting observers who once lit up Discord and Telegram with every new comet, find themselves starved for updates. The encounter is days away, and the only certainty is that the world's best-positioned observers are saying almost nothing. The question lingers. In a solar system built on open science, what does it mean when the closest witnesses choose not to speak? July 1st, 2025. On a quiet night in the Southern Hemisphere, the Atlas Survey in Chile flagged a faint, fast-moving object in its automated scans, one that didn't fit any known solar system track. Within hours, the alert reached orbit analysts across the globe. By dawn, the Minor Planet Center had logged the first astrometric data, and the search for earlier images began. In the digital archives of the Zwicky Transient Facility, a handful of frames from June 14th showed the same streak hiding in plain sight weeks before its official discovery. Each new data point tightened the orbit, and the numbers told a story that left little room for doubt. This was a visitor from deep space. The orbital solution came together in a matter of days. Eccentricity greater than one, hyperbolic excess velocity clocked at 58 kilometers per second, inbound. The inclination, just under five degrees from the ecliptic, stood out. Most interstellar objects cut steep angles through the solar system, but 3I slash Atlas was different. Its path hugged the plane of the planets, a corridor so flat that the projected trajectory would thread the inner solar system with uncanny precision. Mars, Earth, Venus, and Jupiter would each lie within a narrow band of approach, as if the object was tracing a route mapped by a mission planner. For orbital dynamicists, this was not just rare, it was nearly unprecedented. Simulations showed that out of thousands of random interstellar entries, only a handful would produce such a coplanar, multi-planet sequence. The ATLAS team, led by seasoned survey astronomers, handed off their data to orbit modelers and statistical specialists. Each ran Monte Carlo ensembles, propagating the solution backwards and forwards across millions of years. The results were definitive. 
no prior solar system binding, no plausible Oort cloud origin. 3i Atlas had entered from the galactic field, unbound by the sun, on a trajectory that would never return. The odds of this corridor-like path, less than 1 in 500 for known interstellar populations, added weight to every subsequent calculation. For the scientific community, the stakes were clear. An interstellar object, confirmed by both archival and real-time data, was about to sweep through the heart of the solar system. Its low inclination, hyperbolic orbit set the stage for everything that followed. A close pass by Mars, a series of planetary encounters, and a growing sense that this was no ordinary comet. The facts were in, and the questions were only beginning. At 6.4 astronomical units from the Sun, far beyond the frost line, 3, I slash Atlas lit up. That first spike in brightness flagged by Southern Hemisphere photometry teams broke every rule in the comet playbook. Water ice shouldn't sublimate at that distance. Yet the light curve rose, fell, and rose again in a pattern that looked less like steady outgassing and more like a heartbeat. Episodic bursts, each lasting hours to days, gave the comet a breathing rhythm. The numbers didn't lie. Amateur and professional observers linked by Discord and late-night Slack channels, watch the magnitude jump by half a point, then fade, then leap again. No ordinary comet pulses like this. Dust physics offered another puzzle. High-resolution imaging from Chile and South Africa revealed tail segments curving sunward against the expected flow of solar wind. The standard model predicts light, fast-moving dust streaming away from the sun, forming a classic anti-solar tail. Here, the tail was kinked, with dense clumps lagging behind and, at times, bending forward. Spectral analysis showed a dominance of heavier, slower-moving grains, particles that should have settled quickly or failed to escape at all. The geometry of the tail, mapped in detail by photometric analysts, defied simple explanations. Some suspected magnetic effects, others pointed to volatile pockets venting in jets, but no consensus formed. The light curve, when plotted over weeks, didn't smooth out. Instead, it flickered, each burst revealing a fresh outflow of gas and dust, each lull suggesting a pause or a seal forming over an active vent. The amplitude and timing of these pulses matched neither solar rotation nor any known periodic driver. The objects seemed to be responding to internal triggers, not external heating. For observers, this meant sleepless nights chasing unpredictable outbursts, recalibrating equipment to catch the next surge. For theorists, it meant revisiting models of interstellar ice chemistry and thermal stress. By the time 3i slash Atlas reached the orbit of Jupiter, the dust-to-gas ratio was already skewed. Mass estimates based on coma brightness suggested more material was leaving the nucleus than its size could easily account for. Some teams argued for a larger, more volatile rich core, Others wondered if fragmentation or subsurface caverns were driving the excess. The only certainty was that standard cometary physics couldn't keep up. Professional photometry campaigns ramped up, shifting from routine survey mode to high-cadence, multi-band monitoring. Instruments tuned for water, carbon monoxide, and organic signatures worked overtime. Observers logged every brightness jump, every tail anomaly, feeding the growing sense that three, I slash Atlas was not just another icy wanderer. The object's behavior, off script from the start, demanded new tools, new eyes, and a willingness to follow the data wherever it led. Every major telescope with a line of sight to 3 I slash Atlas is now on high alert, though few say so publicly. At the European Space Operations Center, Mars Express controllers have slipped new coordinates into the week's observation plan. The trace gas orbiter's spectrometers, tuned for methane and water vapor, are quietly redirected to scan the comet's coma for organics and rare isotopes. Each adjustment is logged in technical bulletins, never press releases. The changes are subtle, an extra pass here, a shifted window there, but they add up to a campaign built for speed and secrecy. On the other side of the solar system, the James Webb Space Telescope has carved out precious hours from its crowded schedule. In the March to September cycle, a fast-track proposal pushed JWST's NIR spec and MIRI instruments into play, searching for the fingerprints of pristine molecules, 
organics, silicates, and carbon monoxide, preserved since the comet's journey between the stars. Reviewer notes, visible only in summary, describe the event as an unprecedented opportunity. Yet the final allocation comes with a warning. The blackout window looms, and even JWST's sunshield can't bend to catch the comet during solar conjunction. Hubble's directors have authorized a string of high-cadence imaging runs, focusing on the bright halo of dust and gas enveloping the nucleus. Early results hint at a puzzle. The mass of ejected material, inferred from the coma's brightness, far exceeds what the estimated nucleus size can explain. If the core is less than 6 kilometers across, as direct imaging suggests, then the rate of outflow must be driven by something more than solar heating alone. Some teams argue for hidden reservoirs or even fragmentation in progress. Others urge caution, pointing to the error bars that always haunt comet science at this distance. Outside the official channels, a global network of amateur astronomers has become the backbone of continuous monitoring. In South Africa, Chile, and Australia, coordinated teams race the sunrise to log each outburst. Discord and Telegram light up with raw photometry, spectral snapshots, and time-stamped magnitude jumps. Rivalries flare over calibration methods and equipment access, but the data flow is relentless. When the coma flickers or the tail kinks, amateurs are often the first to spot the change, sometimes hours before the professional alerts catch up. As the blackout window approaches, every observation counts. Mars orbiters will soon be the only eyes with a clear view. Hubble and JWST must stand down, their solar avoidance protocols locking them out of the action. For a brief span, the fate of the campaign rests on a handful of spacecraft and the resolve of a scattered community, each watching for signs that this visitor is more than just another comet. The clock ticks, and the data stream becomes a lifeline. In the weeks before perihelion, the official silence grows heavier. Preprints dry up, conference sessions close their doors. Technical notes, once routine, are now stamped with phrases like operational security and internal review only. Astronomers who once traded Slack messages about filter choices now speak in careful code or not at all. A handful of leaks surface, snippets from mission chat logs, a redacted email chain with the subject line, data embargo until further notice. Even the usual torrent of raw images from Mars Express slows to a trickle. The data exist, but access is restricted, sometimes for days. Inside these quiet corridors, frustration simmers. Avi Loeb and his circle of intercept advocates push for a last-minute spacecraft flyby, Juno, repurposed, could make a pass. The answer is swift, not feasible. Budget lines are cited. Risk to primary science is invoked. In one Slack exchange, a project manager writes, Not a chance. Mission priorities set. No Delta V to spare. The proposal dies in committee, never reaching public debate. Meanwhile, whispers spread through amateur networks. A Slack leak hints at a technical anomaly, but the details are scrubbed before they reach wider channels. For every rumor, there's a counter-rumor. Data are being held for coordinated release or embargoed to avoid misinterpretation. The blackout window is coming, and with it, a sense that the best data may remain behind closed doors. For now, the halls of planetary science are quiet, too quiet for comfort. Late September 2025. The countdown to perihelion is underway, but for Earth-bound astronomers, the view is about to vanish. As 3. I slash Atlas closes in on the Sun, its apparent separation from our star drops below 15 degrees, lost in the blaze of daylight. Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope, with their strict solar avoidance rules, enter enforced downtime. Their observation logs, so recently filled with time-stamped entries and urgent calibration notes, now go blank. For nearly two weeks, from October 29th through November 10th, the world's most sensitive telescopes are blind to the interstellar visitor at its most active. Mars, trailing just 18 million miles behind, becomes the lone vantage point with a clear line of sight. Mars Express and the Trace Gas Orbiter, never designed for comet tracking, squeeze in whatever observations their instruments can handle. Their controllers, 
working in the shadow of institutional silence, rotate spectrometers, retask images, and push data packets through the thin window before solar interference disrupts communications. Every kilobyte counts. The fate of the campaign now hinges on the resilience of these orbiters and the ingenuity of their teams. Meanwhile, at the fringes of the sun's glare, the SOHO and Stereo spacecraft stand ready. Their coronagraphs, built to block direct sunlight and reveal the faintest whispers of plasma, may catch a glimpse of 3 qi slash atlas as it skirts the edge of their fields. But these are indirect eyes, sensitive to brightness, not to the molecular fingerprints or dust grain velocities that drove the early campaign. The data stream, once a flood, narrows to a trickle. The blackout is total. For the first time since discovery, the story of 3i slash Atlas continues beyond the reach of Earth's instruments and the world is left waiting for whatever comes next. October 31st, 2025. Perihelion. For months, the debate has circled around a single, stubborn question. Just how big is the heart of 3i, i slash Atlas? Early Hubble and JWST imaging capped the nucleus at under 6 kilometers, but as the comet neared Mars, the numbers kept climbing. Some photometric models, driven by the sheer mass of dust pouring from the coma, now argue for a core up to 10 kilometers across. If true, it's a behemoth among interstellar visitors, and the implications ripple through every scenario on the table. Scenario modelers race to map the final outcome. Three fates dominate the discussion. Fragmentation would scatter debris along the orbit, each shard a window into the comet's hidden structure. A dramatic flare, an explosive surge of gas and dust, could signal collapse or a volatile rich core giving up its secrets in a single violent act. Survival, though, would raise the sharpest questions. If 3. I slash Atlas passes perihelion intact, with its low inclination, flyby-like path undisturbed, theorists will be left to explain not just its strength, but its intent, natural or engineered. Mainstream teams lean toward a volatile rich interstellar comet, its oddities chalked up to buried ices and unfamiliar chemistry. Yet a vocal minority keeps the mission profile hypothesis alive, pointing to the corridor trajectory and episodic outbursts. For now, the nucleus remains hidden in glare and speculation. The final act waits in the solar fire. Despite intense scrutiny, key questions remain. The cause of its rhythmic activity, the nature of its dense dust grains, and why its mass and coma size diverge from established models. As Earth-based observation paused for solar conjunction, only Mars orbiters and solar observatories maintained partial coverage. The evidence leaves one fact clear. 3. I slash Atlas has challenged standard cometry science and exposed deep gaps in how institutions communicate extraordinary data. What happened at perihelion, and what this object truly is, remains a matter for future archives to resolve.